it, folks. Game number three, Evil Geniuses, Team Secret, elimination on the line here at the Captain's Draft 4 Minor, presented by Events DC. Do you think they cheer because we're stopping to talk about yes. nonsense or the game? Okay. It, it's an amalgamation. It's a general <laughs> excitement. I think it's our faces being away. Oh, That's, probably that yeah. one. We got an Elder Titan in the pool, Io, Spirit Breaker, Night Stalker. Io, holy crap. All right. Some pretty big top tier Shadow Fiend making an appearance. Juggernaut here again for game three. I don't feel like Io will see the light of the big face. No, no not. I've seen uh, a lot of familiar faces though. Like you said, that Magnus back in with the Juggernaut, another Death Prophet and Shadow Shaman. Definitely could pick up. Let's not forget about the little lady in the bottom left here. Yeah. Dark, Dark Willow. Yeah. Good pushing lineup. So the uh, position four pool is massive in this one. You've got a uh, couple from the Agi, uh, mostly Nick Sasson being the best one, but theoretically could be Avenge. But uh, more importantly, you then get into the Spirit Breaker, the Night Stalker, uh, as well as the Elder Titan. Yeah. So I think we might be a little bit light on off laners. You've got a Beastmaster up there. You've got the Magnus, of course, but... Well, no more Magnus. No, okay. I'll let that go. Oh. Yeah, I, I like this. Focus in on the off laners. Well, we have Legion, Beastmaster, potentially Nick Sasson. I the guess Prophet. Elder Titan, sort of? Yep, yep. definitely, yeah. I think the I think the mid pool is also uh, something to keep in. I think this might be another one of those earlier Shadow Fiend games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could agree with that. Any pairing for the Huskar? That's particularly scary. I guess Wisp Huskar a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Very very strong. Other Titan uh, Bond. Skyrath is a hero that I I really like. Say say he gets later in the draft. Not so many mid heroes left. This is a hero you could pick early that can transition into a mid hero. It can surprise a lot of teams. It does a lot of damage now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the last big time I can remember was when Weehaw was playing at a TI, yep. and that was... He got what he wanted, he got that big start, but couldn't quite close out uh, mm -hmm. a lot of they have changed, the end games with that hero. Quite a lot. You know, you guys had one job in that pre-show, and that was to remember that damn photo booth that's in the back of the venue that we all promised Slacks we would talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a photo booth in the back of the venue, so if you're here and you have some downtime, go check it out, get yourself a selfie, and take home a piece of Captain's Draft memorabilia. Or wow. get a free passport photo as... Uh, yes, of course. Get those passport photos say taken while you up. can. So don't smile. Can't do that. They, they don't like that. And don't wear any of the props. Or they, they probably won't accept it. Oh, right. It. There's props back there as well. So go crazy. Oh, Try and grab slacks and drag them over there. Another hero that's... You have my permission. Cool. Oh, my bad. No, I'm looking at you to <laughs> ask what the hero is. Well, Jack, you're saying. so innocent. You just apologize for interrupting memes. My. Seriously. A lot of work we need to I do on you, my, my friend. I know where the priorities are here. Um... <laughs> Gotta let the memes flow. Um, is, is the Beastmaster? Is this something that, again, in terms of vision, um, one of the, I think, pretty much the only vision specialty hero in this pool. Um, it's something that Sumel, I think, has played quite a bit as well. What about Night Stalker? Yeah. That cool too. Can we have him too? Uh, we're just so used to Night Stalker. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even notice him anymore. What about the global concussive shot from Skyrim Mage? Dude, you're on it. <laughs> Boom. Do you think Nyx Assassin is as valuable in this mode? Because as a first pick in regular Dota, it deters a lot of those really scary heroes. But in this case, those heroes might not really be in the pool. Not to say Nyx Assassin isn't good on his own, but I think it limits a little bit of his power as a first pick compared to traditional I captain's mode. Mana burn, especially in a smaller pool, is extremely valued in certain situations. That's this, true. That's a Yeah, I agree with that one as well. If you're looking at a limited pool of in-source supports, exactly, yeah. mana burn might have even more value. I like how uh, extremely frustrating he is too, because uh, his invisibility is obviously extremely strong for initiations and everything, and it's very expensive now to try and deal with that as a support because you've like no gold. But he's even strong, like even if he's not initiating through that invisibility, Nick Assassin is still super, super annoying to play against. So that's true. Okay, not too shocking to see him I, gone. I still think Skyrim Mage might be the thing. I'm, I, I'm loving it. I'm feeling the SB this game. Gonna make an appearance. Gonna charge on in here. Give us some vision. That counts. They like to play with speed a lot, and Skyrath fits up. Uh, Shane, fits you might be a genius. Pill. Just say, keep saying heroes really loudly. Okay. And then they'll just pick them, I think. <laughs> that's, uh, that's definitely hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> but Shane, are you thinking support, core, or you can either, do either, or? right? Okay. That's, it's like the flex you pick thing. Yeah, core Skyrath can be pretty yeah, impressive. Really, that hero, like they low changed, armor, but huge damage. They changed his talents recently. A lot of the new items are good on the Kia, so it even lands. Oh, oh, yeah. I would Kia. say either Kia. is correct. Roar is probably the best. Duel is also very good. Probably one of those two heroes you'd be looking at uh, with yep. the Skyrath Mage, right? You want to have some way to keep that extended combo, stationary. Yeah. Legion Commander is a pretty natural partner for that as well. Very fun. Yeah. I know Fata does like Legion as well, so good pairing. Yeah, we've not seen Legion really touched much in this event. She's made it into a couple pools, but not really picked her band that I can remember. 
What about um, Spirit Breaker you were talking about earlier? Probably going to be the EG pick, I would guess. Team Secret, no? The counter maybe. Shadow Shaman, like in lane? I feel like they want to... Well, I guess there's no risk of losing both well, the not. Legion and the Beast, but... There is also a little bit of aura gaming available. You've got a Vengeful Spirit as well as Luna in the pool, so there's always potential for some five-man, but hey, you guys called it again, Legion Commander. Now pair up with the Sky Wrath. Not just that, but a very annoying and bullying laner. Yeah. It's like you have to invest a lot to really stop him from getting in your safe laner's face. I like the Legion plus one into the Shadow Shaman. It's like Shadow Shaman doesn't deal with the two heroes. If it's just one, it's completely fine, but... Yeah, then you kind of have to, like... Uh, like up your own ante of your lane. So you start yeah. with Shadow Shaman and that says, okay, you can't bring a good solo off laner. He's not gonna have a fun time, doesn't matter. If they add a hero, then now if you're responding ZG, you would want one of those cores that then can add something to the equation. Maybe extreme damage from a Juggernaut mm -hmm. can still work, even in more threatening lanes. Um, someone like the Gyrocopter fits that as well. Or you have a hero like a Sven or a CK that can like add a stun. Um, you have to like kind of keep upping it to match whatever they're gonna bring at you. Easy peasy, arteasy, squeezy. Big fan. I like this lemon thing he's got going. <laughs> On theme? That's creative. Man. That is creative. That's one of the better signs I've ever seen, to be honest. You know, get him off the stage. Yeah, get him. Yeah. <laughs> Security. All right. <clears throat> Looks like uh, EG may be formulating the rest of their draft here. Perhaps thinking, are there any decent counters to Legion Commander here? Because it doesn't really look like it. Pugna? Venge, Pugna are the ones in. Yeah, Top it's like two. swap. It. They're pretty weak okay. sauce. The, I the gyro, uh, I the gyro you mentioned, Trent. I, I like the, the gyro option here as well. For EG? Here, stable hero, I guess. It's good for just fighting as five, pushing. Pretty classic EG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to Necrophos, guys? Is he just they, is he they, a dumpster pile? Okay, now? so I actually thought when they changed the fusel blade, it would buff Necro. Quite, it, it right. Did. Yeah. But they kicked him so far down that he can't get back up. So what's his issue? He just takes too long to come online. Too they, squishy. They, cha they changed how his healing works, so he doesn't get as much. Yeah. This guy had to, if you don't pick SF in these two picks right here for EG, it's almost guaranteed that Secret's going to take it, I would think. It's also scary with the Legion Commander. It has a similar flavor to that Noggin Net, you know, set up raises, big burst damage on mm -hmm. top of dual targets. It's scary to hand that combo over. But Secret, they still have the Death Prophet left in the pool. Definitely a strong, stable mid laner. They can still opt for themselves, kind of keep things a little bit easy. Not too threatened by the Shadow Fiend this game compared I to how many of these, like, SFDK games we've seen. What's here? Night Stalker. A little vision game. That's interesting. Going for that over the uh, Spirit Breaker. I guess Night Stalker is considered to be a higher tier. Um, the, the miss against Legion is good against Jewel as well. Yep. Right? Very good. I think also desirable just against Skywrath. If those two bump into each other and they're yeah. both supports, mm -hmm. Night Stalker definitely wins that trade. Yeah, you can match the speed at night and you're not afraid of him. You can bully him out. Yeah. And it's hard to tell how much he was even doing like in the last game. Like you don't really, we don't have the full perspective of like what Team Secret just went through when they were just playing against the Night Stalker. Yeah, so with the limited, with the limited mid pool and then the, uh, the banning out of the Viper, this, this is a, figures to be a pretty dominant hero. Third pick Venge, kind of a flex pick now for Secret, could be a position one, could also be a support. May just be a little bit of a deny pick, uh, so the LC doesn't get countered. But... Um, Scarlet Mage as a hero doesn't do well with low vision, like when Night Stalker ulties, he needs to cast all his spells. From, like, he has quite long range on his cast. And that's, that's true, yeah. That's usually one of the strengths of the hero. He's very weak when you get up in his face. So when Night Soccer ulties, he's not able to be the, even half the hero. And Venge helps with that, too, because you have to just up the vision with the wave. So, And it will be the Luna. So double aura strats. Okay, they go for here. the aura strat. And nighttime vision as well is increased. So That's a great point. During Night Soccer's ulti, Luna has more vision. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Is this where we finish it out with the mid Beast Master and call it a day? Triple auras. Now, that <laughs> would be a blast from the past. <laughs> the old Fada Beastmaster. Yeah. Mech first, let's go. Dude. Gaming. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> mm, the aura would be nice. Now, you know, they could always offlane the Beastmaster and jungle that LC trend. He's gone, guys. Well, they took him. They, they snagged him up. That's a good hero, though. Um, fits that style that Samil's been playing. Look, being aggressive, hunting for kills. More focused on that rather than the uh, overall farming patterns. Kind of spooky into Venge, but overall a good hero, right? Venge can just swap the roar target. And they press the attack too, right? Which yes. is also one of the best counters. One of right? maybe the best counter. Yeah, it's actually. like a Fodic in that, basically. So a lot of initiation for EG now, though. Once Rasta gets Blink, you've got Night Stalker, who's always going to be that frontliner, and now Beastmaster. A lot of heroes to set up for the Shadow Fiend. Alley oop it, if you will. Hmm. I guess not. Okay. And also the the best <laughs> fight starter really left in this pool too, right? So they have two Vision heroes. Um, they have the Beastmaster to also be able to initiate, which isn't really left in the pool. There's an option. 
I like the gyro better than the jug. Uh, we have a lot of BKB piercing with the duel, the swap, overall just high damage too. And then gyro can just kind of try and play around the Night Stalker. Uh, yep. As well as the Beastmaster getting in the front lines. Luna also relies on timings, right? You want to you wanna play around your Luna as your focal point of your team. And Jero can disrupt that very easily by just rotating, ch changing the pace of the game. Gyro. He can also roam in early and steal stacks before Luna can actually farm them too. So if you try and like get this big economy game going or something like that, you might just run in there with an EG roam with a Beastmaster 6. One of the problems for Gyro is he's one of those carries that you feel like you have to get a couple defensive items. He really needs BKB, so sometimes that damage is lacking. But here you've got minus armor from Shadow Fiend and the attack speed from Beastmaster. As now Pugna will be the final pick for Secret. Okay. All right, boys, we're going to need some predictions. This is the Game 3 decider, the big kahuna. Anyone that gets dueled by Legion Commander is going to get the Crypt and Skyrat will be, then they're going to have a bad time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be filthy. I, I like Secret's draft overall. I I'm, think going, good I'm with you. I'm on the Secret camp. I'm not going to give you a chance to go first, Trent. I'm calling uh, Secret. We'll let you go last. Jack, who's taking Game 3? Who's going home? Um, I'm going to have to stick with my prediction before and go with Secret on this one. Wow, really, guys? I'm going against my bracket. I, th I oh, said Secret. Big. I thought they were actually going to 2-0 this. But I actually like the EG draft a lot better. I think it's very really? synergistic. It looks okay. good. I will say the press the attack does look like a decent problem, though. And but swap. other than that, everything else looks pretty good. You I'm can going swap into press. I feel like if they don't get that timing for Secret, that little bit of a later game looks a little bit better to me from EG. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see if these predictions come true, but folks, it's time for the Game 3 Decider, and we are going to hand it over to our casters. Once more, it's going to be Mott and Brax in the Situation Room. All right, thanks so much, Zyri. We are here into Game Number 3. We know what the fans want. We are Evil Geniuses versus Secret Brax. What do you think about this particular third game in the draft that we just saw? It should be good. Oh. <laughs> Classic. Great stuff, Brax. Thanks. You're welcome. That's why I'm here, Mom. That's why I'm the expert. <laughs> We're going to get into the game in just a second here. Um, but very surprising second game. I think they, they really weathered the storm like we talked about. EG, they've been looking good. I think the, they've answered a lot of questions in terms of playing against a team like Secret, who, of course, just won the last major coming up. They feel very confident, I think, and comfortable in the roles that they have at their disposal. So, Yep. Great stuff, Brax. Thanks for that. All right, we're going to jump into the game. It is game three now getting underway. And we are getting going here by seeing Secret move through the middle lane together as a team. They will smoke up to start things off. So, Yaps was playing the Skyrath Mage. We'll have Ace playing the Luna. I do you and, like the uh, Skyrath Mage? The Skyrath Mage pick, you were talking about it in the draft. It's interesting. It's not the best scaling hero maybe in the late game in terms of against BKBs, but I like the point that, that, that Shane brought up is if there's a duel happening, you're going to just drop a, a Mystic Flare down, you have the yeah. Ancient Seal. You have a lot of magical burst damage for there Secret no, in the beginning uh, of the game. There's no saves at all, right, for whoever gets dueled, and then you can just drop the Skyrath Mage Ultimate on top right. of that. You don't have to commit a whole lot, right? You just casually toss them down, and then that's it. They're probably dead. Yeah. It's also one of these tilting heroes for uh, mid laners, right? It starts with the Null Talisman, sits there, Arcane Bolts about a million times. We're going to have a first blood here for Secret, potentially. Crit pretty fast, trying to get through. Good body block from Yapsor, but Crit able to make it out, but not for much longer. One more auto attack in mid one will secure first blood for Secret at the start of this game. Oh, very nicely done. Big pick. Especially for your mid laner against a uh, hero like Shadow Fiend, right? Who can get... He snowballs one way or the other, it feels like. Yeah, and this is a comfort here for RTZ. We've already seen it once in this tournament. He played it pretty well. They lost that game. That was actually against Complexity yesterday, and uh, wasn't the best game for him in terms of the late game, but we know what he's capable of on that hero in the mid lane. Let's see if he has a better performance this time on. Yeah, we'll see. And of course, Samael also playing the Beastmaster, which he played the other day. He had an IO to help him out. A lot of split pushing for him, but built an early Necro, was able to find a lot of towers and go from there. And uh, they do have the vision advantage. You have the Night Stalker. You also yep. have the Beastmaster on the same team. So EG, in terms of warding, in terms of vision, they certainly have the advantage. Yep, very true. And even though they don't have the most uh, reliable stuns against the Legion Command their heal, still, right, when you have that vision advantage, you can kind of get in there. You can hit these targets from, and catch them off guard, especially a Legion Commander right here who's typically in the front lines. Should not be too bad at all. We will see Sumail pull the wave back to his tower, as many offlaners do. And uh, we'll have probably, it looks to be a dual lane in the mid lane for, for the start of this game. And then 1v1 top is how this is going to shape up in terms of the lanes, which is going to be... Uh, actually, Luna's going to get some help from the bench for now. So we'll see if they keep that lane going up there or if they're going to send the help down bottom with the Leech Commander. That's a pretty hard mid lane for Shadow Fiend. Yeah. It's constantly harassed by both heroes. Tons of range on both of them as well. 
and Shadow Shaman can't really do a whole lot to, to help that. I mean, Arteezy's already at half HP and mid one has six last hits, so yeah, this is not a, good, a great start for Arteezy. They both level two as well, so they can just dive him like I mean, this. They're thinking just... about it, and Decrep, yeah. Nether Blast about to come through. It actually just misses, so Arteezy doesn't take the damage from the Nether Blast, but still, a lot of harass already being dealt by Absor in mid one at the beginning of this game. And Misery, what can he do? I mean, he could just sit back, he can maybe auto attack. Exactly, he right? Has it ether shock. Like he can do a whole lot at all. He helps, but it's not enough to, to change anything, to offset this uh, I mean, big advantage. How does this get better for the Shadow Fiend, then, in the beginning of the game? And with time. Eventually, he'll be able to get some sort of last hits, get some levels, and then it gets easier that way to, to keep farming. But in the beginning, it's super, super hard. Secret off to a pretty good start in both top and mid. But now Fada taking some damage. Flat cannon, crit. I think he has another Void of the Ready here in just a couple of seconds, but Fada pretty quick with the... Overwhelming odds. He will get voided up, but Fear is not in position to go for this kill, so Fada's going to be able to get back to the tower and salve up, no problem. Talk about this lane setup here. EG dodged the uh, aggro lane from Team Secret, and uh, you can't really leave your Luna in this lane. Right? You kind of want to sit there all the time to help protect her. So, it's a bit weird. A lot of times when teams go aggro, they don't put their safe lane carry in the aggro trine because right. of that reason, because they want to be able to be flexible and keep moving around the map, especially when you're playing against a hero like Shadow Fiend, who typically want to roam onto, but... I mean, I guess it's pretty okay here since the supports on EG don't have the highest kill potential against Luna, so looks fine. Yeah, they're actually just leaving him up there alone for now. Uh, Puppy is rotating back down to his base to heal up, it looks like, and uh, this will give Sumail some room to work with, and Misery has rotated out of mid, rotated up top, and trying to get some last hits for Sumail. And Arteezy is starting to get some last hits himself, six last hits, and again, like you talked about, it gets better for him as time progresses. It gets more Necromastery stacks. Yep. But and eventually, Skyrath, he's going to want to leave the lane once he doesn't want to soak up too much experience from Pugna. Right. It's just not worth it at that point, but they can always come back later when Pugna is six, and then it's a super easy kill. Yeah. And now this is turning into the real aggro trying like you were talking about, but there is a ward scouting out Ace and Puppy moving in. Lucent Beam will hit on Sumail, but Puppy's not there for the, uh, the stun. Can't quite find it. Although Sumail is juking through, the Wave of Terror comes out. Ace going to try to body block there. It's going to be the Concussive Shot as well, and Sumail in a lot of trouble. They're going to be able to get this kill with one more Lucent Beam, it looks like. They just need the auto attacks, and Yapser will secure it for Secret. Yeah, very nicely done. Good rotation coming in. It's a thing, right? They've got a lot of strong lanes to play off. Legion Commander can kind of hold their own down in this lane and just fight off these heroes without too much of a threat of dying. And then the two lanes have pretty good kill potential. Kill potential. So, I mean, good. Fada is having a great time down here. 15 yeah. last hits, 7 to 9. He doesn't seem too concerned about fear or crit. No, he can just mana through the harass. It doesn't really matter too much. I wonder what fear went in terms of skill, but it's, he's only level 3 now. But... He's got the flak and mid oh, one and everything. Okay. okay. I was wondering, some t uh, you, you forego one of those spells sometimes. That's the sample platter bot. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. So we'll go for the homing missile one point. And mid one still doing really well. 20 last hits, but... Uh, I'd say I have made a pretty good recovery, though, considering the start. Yeah. But do you leave, if you're secret, do you leave those supports top and, and help the Luna, or do you eventually rotate them around? It looks like they're sending uh, Yapsor back mid anyways at this point. Nighttime is gank mid time. Yes. For the Night Stalker as well, Crit, what's he up to? He has a haste rune. He's got boots of speed. Only level two, but still might be able to find something... He's just trying to scout out Fada, see what's going on over here. Not that he can do much, but uh, this is the vision advantage for EG at this point. It's not really from the gank, right? Even if he goes mid lane, it's still pretty hard to kill Pugna off, so... Yeah, very true. Just trying to, I think, secure Ears farm with only 12 last hits. It feels like they're further behind maybe than they should be, but... I mean, they're super far behind. It's a 2k, it's a 2K lead, lead already for right? Secret. This is at five minutes into the game. That, yeah. that is a, an absurd number for five minutes Where into this game. Where is this games. disparity? I mean, what happened in this I game? mean, look at the top CS and the top net worth. Mid one, of course, having a great time. Fata is having a great time bottom as well. Yeah, I mean, look at that. We have uh, Yapsor's same net worth, or even higher net worth than Sumail. And Sumail right. trying to put some pressure on Ace, but now the Magnus will come on the other side. Crit trying to man fight up against Fata. Sumail getting lower and lower. Ace, one more auto attack, a Lucent Beam. Something will do the job they need. Something. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they will secure the kill onto Fata. Sumail's Sumail is able it. to salve up the Wave of Terror and will cancel it. Now axing his way through, trying to get out. Lucent Beam, Magic Missile. One more auto attack, and Puppy will secure the kill. So a one for one trade on the offlanders across the map. Well, Secrets early game this game has been explosive, and it's only five minutes in. Yeah. Very nice. They do lose Fatsa, but they're not too concerned about that. And uh, it looks like Arteezy is just jungling. Stacking. They may have underestimated the, the pressure the Skyrath Mage is putting out in the lanes. Yeah. Arcane Bolt doing a serious amount of damage. Fear getting pushed out of lane. I mean, look at this uh, situation now. Gyrocopter's in the offlane. Where can he go? 
Mid one reveals the smoke of RTZ. They will void him up. He this has so rain drops. This is though. very tough. He has level two decrep plus his life drain. They even cancel the TP for secret. They don't even need help for mid one. He's not in any situation where he's going to die there from crit, misery, and RTZ. So and he kinda, just backs up. That kind of shows the desperation, you know, at trying to get a kill. Running in from the front line, that's a very low percentage play, but have to go for it at this point of the game. Need so, to make something happen. Last game, Secret were ahead. They, they got a lot of towers, and yep. we talked about EG weathering the storm. Is it a similar situ situation for EG, or is this a completely different scenario? I don't scenario feel like them? it. I feel like it's a bit different, because Luna, especially uh, combined with Evenge, and you have other cores as oh, well. Oh boy. That's just going to be more going the way of Ace and Secret. They yeah, use the free Eclipse. Money. And uh, despite being a long cooldown, definitely worth it to find themselves a kill for Ace. It's a bit different, right? Because uh, last game they played off the Timber Saws, tankiness, and that goes through different phases of the game. This game they actually have real hard carries. They have real late game. Yep. Now Luna especially is able to push down towers via yep. the monster in the late game that we know is capable of being. And uh, he is having a great start now. Top in the net worth. He's actually pretty much tied with mid one at this point. And uh, getting plenty of CS to boot. A full Kaya is done for the Pugna right now. He wow. has no boots, but you know what? That's that's fine, I'm sure. He's got built-in boots, Mont. 335 move speed. This is without a wind lace also, by the way. And this is like one of the fastest heroes. He's actually just a race car. So this is, I think, the first game in a long time where pulling up the net worth at six minutes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because the CS doesn't really tell the tale of the story at all. It's just... These heroes are ridiculously far ahead of these other, other counterparts, right? I mean, it's insane. Look at Luna and Gyro. 1,400 gold difference between the two heroes, and Gyro does not play very well from behind at all. Yeah, they're sure. going to try to go after Sumail. Fata is six. He's got dual Sumail trying to run. He's I don't fast. know if Fata is going to be able to make it in time. Yeah, Sumail is a little bit too speedy for them, so they can't quite get that first dual victory for Fata, but a good attempt. As Yapter will TP top, Ace now in trouble. Crit already used the Void. Nothing they can do. Even with the homing missile, they will not be able to stop that TP from him, and he'll be able to get back to the base in time. Yep, yeah, looks like Pugna blasted on the mid. Tower 2, Misery gets the deny, but still, the, uh, it's an objective acquired. Now Pugna is free to roam around the map and keep doing that everywhere else. It's another element they have, securing towers. Crit will try to go for his own TP. This one will also be successful, but with the Pugna, it adds an element of pushing that maybe Secret might not have had it otherwise. And they're able to take down a Tier 1 tower. He can start moving across the map. Do you think mid-1 comes top now and tries to blast this Tier 1 tower down? Oh yeah, he's already on the way, too. And Fear knows this, he's just gonna leave. There's nothing they can really do to fight this at this moment, you know? Yeah. Even with Kala, it's just not worth it. It feels similar to what happened last game, but you have the Luna. It does. You've got a bit more security in the later parts of the game. You don't fall off as hard. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we're waiting on a couple of big items. Fata has uh, a thousand gold. Maybe thinking about Blink, perhaps another item might be better, something like a Blade Nail. We'll see what it builds into here in just a, a few moments, but. Luna's going to have a mass soon. They're going to take this tower. It's going to be an even uh, bigger uh, net worth lead for Secret. At this point, eight minutes, they already have a 3k advantage, and it's going to be bigger in just a moment. So, Yep, it's going to keep on growing, and I feel like the supports really shine in this kind of a game where towers get together. They get knocked down really early, then a lot of these supports start to farm lanes. So. Nice shackles from Misery. The call down will come through. Chibi's on mass. He's got the raindrop, rocket barrage, the homing missile, magic missile, fear. The ether shot coming in as well. Onto two, but not enough damage. The concussion shot. Now they're going to chase after Misery instead. Arcane Bolt. There's the ancient seal along with it. And the Lucid Beam. One more auto attack. They'll get it done. Yaps are securing the kill. A fifth kill for Secret, and they keep oh, Fata boy. alive while it all happens. Is it shrine time now as well? The it value is. shrine. This is the super value shrine, bro. Everyone's hitting the showers. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's gonna have a good time here for Secret, getting back to full health, and they'll just probably go again. The tier one bottom might yep. be the uh, they're the just in a position for to keep rolling down these lanes. There's not really anything they can do for for Fear and EG. They don't have too many items. They're a little bit lacking in experience in the supports as well. I think they still have level three on crit, and uh, they're not quite at Serpent Wards yet. That's that's one thing to consider. EG getting Serpent Wards might be enough to turn the tides. Roar as well, and yep. another item for Beastmaster obviously will help out too. It'll be very good when Rasta can just play alone and split push while these uh, other heroes start to group up. Yeah, I was gonna say that um, when all these towers fall down, it usually is because cores group up together, right? Pogna and Luna playing together to knock down some of these towers. It gives Skyrath Mage time to just sit in a lane, get level 6, keep farming, and then he'll eventually get super, super farmed as we... He pretty much already is super farmed. Seemingly out of nowhere, though, RTZ is now top in net worth. He is 4,400. He has treads working on drum, 36 necromastery stacks. He also has one point in his ultimate. And if there's a bright spot for evil geniuses, it is Arteezy in the mid lane on the Shadow Fiend. And uh, he'll do his best to carry this game and try to get back into it as they are still down 4k. Yep, he's still doing very, very well. But at the same time, Shadow Fiend can't really fight into these heroes at this stage of the game, right? When uh, Team Secret group up and run on P1s, no part of that at all. He's going to dodge and split farm. So. 
Do you think he needs a, a BKB perhaps to be involved in some of these engagements? Considering he how much sure will players? eventually, but they need something bigger. They, they can actually uh, start these fights with like maybe a book on Beastmaster or level six on Rasta. They need something else that's not really related to Shadow Fiend's level of farm, because uh, it's, it's about the initiation by getting the engagements off. Secret will smoke behind Ace. Ace will move together as a team, and they will look for a potential pick, but. Uh... Or they have the Venge swap into whatever spells it looks like. Yeah, I think they... Fots is not there, so... Yeah, there it is. There it is. The swap into the Mystic Flare. Wow. Oh, where'd he go? I, I don't... He's just dead. Instantly. Dead they will have the dual in the mid lane as well in Misery. They don't get the dual victory for Fata, but it's still another kill. And again, yep. another tier 2 tower. That's the Rasta me. trying to play alone so we can get to that mid tower to drop the wards, right? Yep. I mean, it's very obvious what he wants to do when you can't team fight with the hero, so it's easy to set up for it. And he did have his level 6 as well. He was getting very close to that tower, dropping those Serpent Wards, forcing yep. something for EG to do here, but... Oh, that's the Blink Dagger reveal. Now they know. Yeah. Yep, the experience is definitely hurting on the side of EG. Heroes are super, super low-leveled. I mean, we have almost a 6,000 net worth advantage, a 4,000 experience lead for Secret, so everything going the way. The Again, the one thing to consider for Secret is how to deal with Arteezy. He is the top net worth hero. He is going to be the, yep. the hero they have to deal with at some point in the near future, but otherwise, they're just rolling at this point. Yep, it's going to be that BKB that uh, he needs for sure, and maybe it'll be enough for Eiji to start being able to fight, but... Still pretty far away from it at this point. This 6,000 gold lead at 12 minutes is the biggest I've seen at this tournament so far. Yeah, Game for sure. Cast at least. And again, we talked about it. EG can weather that storm. They only have one kill to their name, but just get one good fight potentially. You know, their vision is very good. Right. They have a lot of good wards coming out. Look at this. Oh, the roar. They're going to find the Luna. The double raise. Big kill for RTZ. And that's one. Yep, very nice. Good road to recovery for evil geniuses. Now they need to get out, and it looks like they will. That's yep. a very big pickup. They also happen to drag the remaining heroes on the side of Team Secret there. So now look down bottom lane. Rasta right in front of that tier one. Here we go. Ward's about to be dropped, and they will. He's a happy guy. And Fear will clear out this wave of Fly Cannon potentially if he has it. Looks like he will. And uh, Crit also coming in to help, and there's nothing Secret can do here. And they're not TPing in. It looks like they don't want to defend this. They're going to move elsewhere, more than likely to the mid lane. Oh, they started. Something happened. They got a kill, forced TPs, now they're pressuring a tier 1 tower, they're, they're uh, getting back in the game. I mean, that's a 2,000 gold swing, so it's pretty good. Feels like they're getting a lot more, though, in terms of just getting a good fight going the way. Keep getting RTZ kills would also be a big big part of this game for them. Yeah, that's true. Once uh, Seeker gets to that point where they take tier 2 towers, it opens up Roshan for them very easily, so that's something they'll have to be aware of, but... I don't know, this game's in a weird state because uh, Secret, they can fight pretty much anywhere, but EG has some pretty decent wards out of the map right now, making it difficult, and it feels like in all these games, EG have pushed out the lanes a bit better than Team Secret have, yeah. so it, uh, it takes them a bit longer to get in position. They're going to go for the duel on Fear. It's only Fada here. It's not that much damage. Now with the Mystic Flare, they probably won't get the duel victory, but they damage. do get the kill. More than enough to get the job done. Yep, Veil complete on the app stores, uh, Skyrath Mage as well. He always Super finds fun. that farm. It's yeah. pretty unbelievable, actually, how much farm you can get on these support heroes. Oh, four kills from CS and a bunch of towers. He's working on the Ags next to him, his quick buy. He's dreaming big. That's good. Dream big, guys. And they found the Luna again getting caught and killed. Silenced up by crit, a couple of raises, and auto attacks from Arteezy, more than enough damage. And they're slowing this Luna down considerably. Luna's farm has been destroyed in the last two minutes. Yep. She was second and now we're and now she spent a whole bunch of time dead, running around trying to find a farm, and SF is starting to climb miles ahead of everyone. RTZ about a thousand ahead of the next closest, which by the way is Fata, surprisingly enough. He's doing really well this game, finding duels, getting kills, and they are going to move together, but Award has spotted them. The vision game right now from Evil Genes is like you talked about. Again. It's that's pretty just, good. That's more time where Team Secret are spent, you know, clumped up, and they've been detected, so EG is just going to farm everywhere else on the map. As Sumail is doing bottom right now, he has his book one completed, now working on book two. Those are, that, that is a big item in terms of taking down towers, in terms of taking fights. Yeah. You talked about how important Necromat or Necrobook is for that particular fighting style for EG. Yep, oh boy. Goodbye. Life drain, see ya. He's got the, he's got the Kaya done, he's got the Aetherlands mid one, is still super farmed as well. Yep. So for, uh, for Secret, do they continue to try to push? They need to, but they need to do it in a way where they don't lose too much farm. Because uh, by them all TPing up into that area underneath that war, which of course they don't know about, but EG farms a lot more gold in those, you know, that minute, minute and a half time period where they're sitting there running from camp to camp while all these other heroes are just split pushing, farming jungle creeps and everything. So EG are closing the gap. It's only a 3k gold difference now. So it's not growing, you know? 
It's just about keeping these waves pushed out, getting those items. Yep. Misery being in a good position, dropping Serpent Wards, maybe trying to go for another tier 1 tower, like in the mid lane, for example. Which is where he's setting up, actually. Yep, this is the part of the game where Night Stalker and Bounty Hunter, uh, sorry, not Bounty Hunter, Beastmaster start to really thrive, right? You just sit on these side lanes, get the vision out with the Hawk, and then you can just play off what you see. And it just becomes really hard for the enemy team to make any moves because you're always constantly dealing with this pressure. They're going to try to make one top. Nether Blast with a decrep, more than enough damage, but they need two auto attacks. Crits actually might oh, live. He even earns himself, too, somehow. Very nice silence. I think Secret afraid of the TPs. They backed themselves up. They didn't go for the kill. Smart decision, just in case EG rotate up there. And now RTZ has the Black King bar, and they're going to work on this Tier 2 tower bottom. Potentially, they might just leave if, if they see these TPs from... Uh, Mid one as well as the Absor. I think once they see Pugna show on the wave, they will definitely leave. Yeah. Or anyone just nuke the wave. But they're forcing them around the map. They're exactly. forcing them out of that top lane, which is very important. Crit gets more experience in farm because of this, and it keeps EG's tier two towers alive. Yep. At the same time, right, secrets still have very, very good late game. It's just about uh, how much you're actually farming, right? When you're forcing all these heroes to keep moving around the map, they're not doing anything. And EG, they're not committed to any sort of push at all. It's uh, guys, we're gonna move down here with two people. We'll show, force them down, and then just keep farming. Speaking of farming, Ace, despite dying twice, giant agent stack being taken by him. He's got his Yasha already, he's got his Mask of Madness, of course, and now back to second in net worth, seemingly out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, he died twice, but again, you can't underestimate the amount of uh, farm that Aluna can acquire in the span of a few minutes. Oh yeah, especially with the uh, Vengeor as well, beefing up everyone on the team. Right. So he's just gonna try to take his own jungle and completely just farm as much as he can here for the next few minutes. Yep, he's got all the space in the world to do it for now. So his Mantis Owl will be done soon, sitting on a thousand gold, ultimate or plus recipe is all he needs for that. And EG looks like they're grouping together to try to get something going here. They have a shrine and uh, they're going to move into the enemy jungle. Although, Secret in the top lane looking perhaps to finish off this tier 2 tower themselves with mid one pushing up and going to be neither blasting this wave down. Yep, EG running uh, or just sitting around the Roche pit. I think um, if they oh. would have shown bottom lane. Oh, all right. Crit is dead. He gets silenced up, plenty of damage, and they get the duel as well. Fata waits, make sure he gets it off in time. That's, I believe, his first duel victory, actually. They will drop wards down in this mid lane, and here we go. Secret trying to jump in. There's going to be a great call down. Ether shot coming through as well. A lot of damage. Misery getting low from the Mystic Flare. Not enough damage to bring him down. Eclipse, now he should fall. The Shackles coming in, but for only for a second longer. Requiem about to go. Hitting up on Ace, not doing that much damage. Smail looking for a roar target if he can possibly find it. Everybody getting a little bit low here, but they will lose two heroes for EG. Still, though, they will get the Tier 1 tower out of it. Fata throwing up the overwhelming odds. They're looking for a TP. EG. Fear trying to get out. Can he make it away in time? He can. Fear makes it out. Arteez is to do the same, teeping in the tree line, and he will, in fact, make it home. But look, meanwhile, up top, oh, mid, mid one puts so much tower. pressure on the tier three tower, it's almost dead. One nether blast away, and That's then that opens the up the too. shrines. Oh my god, he did so much work in that, in that span of like two minutes or so. Can't feel too happy about that one if you're EG, losing you almost your entire tier three tower just for that. Yeah, plus two heroes on top of it, too. I know they were supports, but still getting dropped. Yep, still very important. And that was uh, the 10 second BKB as well for Arteezy on top of that. Yeah, that's true. They weren't able to get in range for the, uh, the roar to kill Luna there, so... Unfortunate. Working on a Shadow Blade next, so... I mean, look at the, uh, the three core heroes from Team Secret. They're closing in on the Shadow Fiend. Before, he was like, you know, 1.5k above the rest. Now, sitting even with the Luna. And again, that Luna just farms so quickly. And not just that, but even mid one as well is not that far behind Ace. Like, 400 gold. I mean, look at this move from Team Secret, right? They're just smoking right back up, try to hit the top lane where it's already chipped away. They're about they can to find, find anything. Sumel. The smoke might break as the Hawk is there, and mid one will see it. Sumel's thinking about going. He's got the Dark Troll Summoner in front to go for and ensnare if he wants it. But Sumel smartly backs away, realizing there might be more than one up here. It's so important he didn't die there. If he died there, that would probably just... It'd be Rax, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Probably could take it so quickly. At least tier threes and shrines, at the, and then maybe even rush on top of that too. Yep. 6k lead for Secret, EG were looking good for a couple of minutes there, but still only 3 kills, they have 1 tier 2 tower left, they're trying to split up the map, get the pressure on the other lanes, it's not the easiest thing in the world for them. There is a Secret also going to make it much harder by trying to take Roshan here, and EG are forced to make a move, or just give this up entirely. So they saw the Luna run from like the uh, Ancient Path towards Roshan, but it might be too late with the double damage already, and, and the uh, thing... armor reduction. DD Luna should take this pretty quickly. And Arteezy's bottom trying to take the tier 2 tower. It looks like they can't even get there in time. Yep, not gonna happen. There All it right. is. Free Roshan. Yep. And that's gonna be Aegis. First Rosh of the game. 
What can you get done with this? Obviously, the tier two tower is something you'd like to take here for secret, but I imagine they'll make their way back up the top because it just takes one blast, right? right? Take the tier tower, uh, tier three tower for free. Knock down some shrines. You can kind of play the game pretty slowly from there. Luna is so good once the tier three tower is taken, but because the uh, the glaives bounce everywhere. So. so it's just going down the checklist, essentially. Exactly. Misery gets off the Hex, might live the life drain. One more tick maybe from mid-one would have done the job. Puppy's going to get caught, though, and killed. Double raise from Arteezy, and he TPs out immediately. See ya. Yep. Nicely done. It's these uh, aggressive plays that Night Stalker allows you to make, gives you the vision, so you can find heroes like that. It's good stuff. He's finished up his Shadow Blade, and he has forced the rotation from mid-one down to the bottom lane, just trying to push out that wave. You know, they don't want that tier 2 to go down and bottom. Mod, even though it's only a Venge kill, still, it delays Team Seeker from being able to group up to get their lanes out safely. You know, they just took Roshan, they want to start making plays towards objectives, but now they can't. They've got a hero down. Fata can still try and pressure top, but uh, actually needs to be careful. I think he saw Arteezy as a war and a sentry there, and Fata won't be able to uh, go down as Arteezy is too close, but good TP from Fata to get back home. Yep, Fata has a Shadow Blade and Blade Mail now, so it's very easy for him to catch these heroes. He's had a great series, super farmed on his Leech Commander, and so far they've done a lot with his duels, finding kills on Fear. It's Make actually a really good game. Like, sure, Team Secret have a bit of a lead, but it doesn't feel impossible for Yuji at all. Right. It feels like it just takes one fight, and then they're ahead. Like, it still feels pretty, pretty darn even. Some good raises from Arteezy, a good call down perhaps. They have a Necro 3 now, or at least they should for the Beastmaster. I haven't checked in on them in a while, but I would assume... Necro yep. 2, actually, I think he... Oh, he purchased a Blink Dagger instead, interestingly enough. Yep. So they need some catch. I think that was the issue with the last play, right, that you talked about. Yep. Swap comes in, Decrep, Nether Blast, see ya. We've seen this before. Yeah. That is super fast. I mean, it's just misery. They grabbed the kill, but now this might lead into that top push that you were talking about, trying to take that Tier 3 tower. It might, but at the same time, we have a Gyrocopter pushing the bottle, who might get caught, but of course... Nope, not gonna happen. There's an Observer Ward there. And he, he saw him Shadow Blade as well. Yep. And so, should Fear should just get out at this point. And looks like he'll be able to make it through. He has a TP scroll available, working on the BKB himself. You know, while BKB is great, it still doesn't protect you from uh, the duel, right? And Luna, the physical damage coming out now. It's funny, at the beginning of the game, she deals no physical damage. It's all magical. And then she starts to scale and does a ton of physical damage. Yeah. That late game carry. Ace is going to be able to do a lot of work here in this game. He's already got his Manta, Mask of Madness, working on his BKB. Yep, getting pretty close to that as well. Yeah, he's starting to get really farmed. No real sense of urgency, though, to use this Aegis. Not yet, at least. Perhaps we'll see uh, some sort of movement now to converge on some of these towers. I guess they're just fine to farm a base. I mean, he's, he's already really farmed. He's already top of the net worth as well. And again, the later you go, the better this loon is going to get. So well, we can look at the uh, difference between what parts of the map Team Secret and EG are farming, right? EG are kind of confined to this bottom part of the map, away from you know, the important objectives that they want to defend. And then Team Secret are farming the other large percentage of the map. They're still out farming. They will get this tier 2 though for EG. Nobody's able to TP in. One TP was cancelled by Secret, and it was also nighttime as well. Another blast from mid one, he's just trying to finish off this tier 2 in the mid lane. Another double damage run at the top rune spot, which may signify something for Secret now that they've grabbed it. It is Ace that has picked it up. They saw Shadow Fiend. Arteezy on the, the hunt, wave of terror cool. coming in. They want the swap back, they've got it. Arteezy in trouble, he's got the BKB, the Requiem is gonna go. This is gonna turn into a team fight. They might find Poppy the double raise, one auto attack will do the job. Dominated spree now for Arteezy. Fata, Shadow Blade up, looking for a dual target, trying to find him, oh, and he will. And now the BKB is going, and Arteezy is in trouble. They get the axes off, it's a one for one trade call down coming in, and Ace is here. But now he made some, the rocket barrage, and Fear goes in, takes the Aegis down. They might be able to get mid one, they silence him up as well. They've got another void ready to go, the urn charge going to the rocket barrage in the Absor, trying to get one with the Mystic Flare. They finally will get a double kill for Ace with the Lucid Beam, oh, but it's a four for three too. trade, and now Ace getting caught by the rocket. He will get stunned up in Fear, looking for the rocket barrage. He has no man to style, all he has is his Mask of Madness, and that's going to be another kill going to EG. Oh, all five dead. Big cheers from the crowd. Way to turn it around. Arteezy goes down, but Fear is there to clean it up with the flat cannon of the gyrocopter doing some serious work in that last fight there, Brax. Well, that fight not only evens up the game, but I'd say it, it kind of puts you ahead, right? You're able to finally take that big team fight that you've been looking for the entire game. You get this massive kill streaks on your team, and it's just, I don't know, it doesn't, they don't feel behind at all. No. I know it's only a... Uh, the gold lead hasn't been that high this game, but that fight looked super, super easy. But the net worth graph tells the tale in terms of what this gold is looking like now. It is dipping down back in EG's favor. Yes, they lost Arteezy, but Fear, we haven't really talked about him in terms of what he can do as a late game carry, what we can see from a gyrocopter, but he shows it there in that last fight. Yeah, big time coming with the call down, the flat cannon, all the good stuff. 
And that's after uh, Secret, they had Roshan too. And they pretty much got nothing out of it. Yep. And that tier 3 tower top lane still stands. Oh, we might see Fod get Misery now. He actually just missed him, I believe. Yep, it was close, but didn't happen. Life Terrain onto Arteezy, but he should be fine. You know, it didn't look that bad at the beginning of the fight, right? Right. Arteezy, you know, kills puppies, his BKB and his ultimate, and then he gets dueled and dies in that fodder, pretty much trades his life for that. It's just, uh, I don't know. Luna took so much damage. It, yeah, as soon as he walks into that rocket barrage, he, he gets shredded. But now he has the BKB, he just picked it up. It's in his stash, he will send it to him in just a moment, so... That type of fight probably won't happen again for EG in terms of the Luna just getting destroyed yeah. right at the start of the engagement. But now, no Aegis. Next Roach is still going to be a bit away. And EG trying to hang on to this tier 2 tower, but it is going to be taken down by mid 1. So all of the outer tower is gone. You know, these fights are without like a Blink Dagger on Rasta as well. Look at this. He just gets life trained from like a mile away. Yeah, it's so sad. Can't do anything He just it. has to walk slowly. He's already a slow guy. Do they have any four stabs on this Dire team? It doesn't look like it. No, not at all. Yeah. I guess they do have BKBs on their course, so the Skyrath Mage doesn't do a whole lot anymore, but there's also that, there's always that chance where uh, they can't get it off in time, right? Right. We have a couple of Lincoln Spheres coming out. Mid one has picked one up. I think Arteezy was building one. Yep, he's got it in his quick buy recipe and his stash as well, so he's pretty close. So, a couple of big items coming out now. A lot of defensive items, especially like we wow, talked about Wow, what's that BKBs. coming out? How did they uh, jump inside of Team Secret? It gives Arteezy a lot of time to press right. his BKB in time. I mean, it's really just the duel that's their, their opener. I mean, yeah. maybe it's... Because they can't swap either. Yeah, so... Once you take that away, the team fight from Secret gets so much worse. You'll have to find a different target, perhaps. Yep. But still, you can't really ignore this hero. No. We've seen what he can do on this hero before, and... Uh, Secret so are going to try to make something happen. They're going to smoke up. There is the Blink Dagger now, done for Misery. They're going to reconvene back at their Tier 3 tower. Maybe do something for EG. But uh, they're not making too many furtive moves. Most people are backing up for EG back into their own base now for Fear. A couple of heroes across the map down bottom for Crit. Oh, they see Arteezy. Smoke is broken. Fata jumping in. Good oh, shadow blade. Where's the detection? They get it off in time. The Mystic Flare and Arteezy is dead. Range? But Fear is in, and now Ace pops the BKB, but he is going to get roared. Good swap for Puppy. He might lose his life, but that's fine. Yeah, sir. Now the Eclipse comes out, not doing too much work here. Ace still trying to find a target, he and he can't. It's a one for two trade for now. Now a two for two. Crit is in. Misery looking to fight. Fear trying to get through, and mid one backing up as well. The homing missile is on him. He's got the deep prep ready to go. The rocket barrage is there, and he's going to fall. Looks like they've got the hex. Mid one will get dropped, and Misery will find a double kill and every time they get Arteezy, Fear is there to turn it right back around. It looks so bad. So awkward. Blink in, gets the Shadow Blade off and then the duel comes out from like 300 range. I don't know how, but it worked out eventually. Just, I don't know, it's just so weird that they're able to kill this uh, hero on the side of Team Secret and then it just doesn't matter. They still lose the fight afterwards. Yeah. He does so quickly, he didn't get the BKB off in that flight either when he got dueled up. Yep. He tried Shadow Blading away, they dropped the sentry. He died super fast. Yeah, I mean, he got blown up. But again, when he gets that Lincoln Sphere, it changes, right? This is what it we does. talked about. That's, that's a very big item for Evil Geniuses in general, and for Arteezy especially. I'm very surprised that you were able to turn that fight and make it as good as it was. Because it started in the worst possible way for them with uh, SF just dying instantly. Yeah. So, things slowing down a bit. A couple of picks here and there. A 1k advantage still for Secret, but that's... A lot of that is in the towers. And next, Roche is up. They will find Puppy. There's the roar. There's no BKB for Ace, I believe. He's just going to have to back up. Not that much he could do there. He can only watch Puppy die. And he needs to back. Fata will find a duel. Oh, there's the Mystic Flare. This is a big kill. They'll find Fear dead for 74. Now Yapster is trying to get out. He'll go for the TP. I don't think there's any way they can stop this. The Axes, not enough damage. And Fear dead for 67. Pretty good trade for Secret across the map. Yeah, picking up the Gyro like that's huge. And Legion Commander is super scary at this point in the game. Solo kills these carries if he can get the dual blade mill off. Mm. What is Fear building next, actually? What is he picking up? Going for the... Uh, SNY. Yep. Yeah. Pretty close. Not really a game changer, but still strong item. Do you think there's any point uh, of, like, his teammate getting Lincolns or getting a Lincoln Sphere himself to try to deal with the he, jumps? He could go for Lincolns, but I imagine he's just going to tank up more. And then Arteezy will play with the Lincolns, and then he'll try to just get Aegis. Maybe like SNY Scotty. Mid one, might yep. be in trouble. Decreps himself, Lincoln Sphere is broken, and he looks to be dead instantly. Good overwhelming odds, a lot of damage being dealt, and Arteezy's pretty low. Now they hex up another, trying to back up EG. They don't want to take too much here. Fear is not there either, but a very nice pick for EG. Get in, get out, don't lose anything for it. Yep. 55 seconds, no pug. 
What can and they do? Oh, look at this. End of the Roche pit, secret go. They're doing some serious work. The armor Roche. reduction, this thing might fall quickly if they're not careful shrining. Oh, it's gonna be easy. The hog will see this, it looks like. Yep. Ace needs to be careful here, so too will Puppy. It's dying really fast, Fear though. is up, they need to get in the pit. EG won't be there in time. There's the HF, the Mystic Flare. Sumail's in trouble getting caught and almost killed, and one more auto attack will do the job. There's the Eclipse, BKB's going. Arteezy is low, Fear now at the fray, and Ace, his BKB about to wear off. And they're gonna try to turn this. Fear taking a lot of damage He's here. Dying. He needs to back up. Sumail will buy back. Ace called down now. Two dead on the side of Secret. Buyback coming in from Sumail. Ace about to fall. They'll get the Aegis, but that's it for now. Yapsor nearby as well. Really low on mana at this point, though. Not much he can do. The Roar is there. Good swap back from Puppy. The Axe is hitting. Puppy's gonna get dropped. A double kill for Sumail. Another buyback. It's gonna be Fasta. They want to chase Ace down if they possibly can. They're so fast. Crit with another board. Good press the attack. The Axe is gonna jump oh. It's Fasta. Center Conqueror is stopped. He'll fall. Well, oh my God. it's going to be everybody going down for secret. Yeah, Snor will be next. The Wild Axe is coming in. One more auto attack should do the job, and it does. Midwood coming in the fight, trying to life drain and get crit, and he will. And now EG will have to back up Sumail super low. He blinks up to the high ground, avoids the nether blast, and somehow survives. Now trying to get away, and it looks like he will be able to. And another Centaur Conqueror stomp for good measure on to mid one. Ooh. What a fight from EG, though. Ridiculously well played. When you're caught in the pit like that, you just got nowhere to go. They end up face tanking all the raises, Shadow Fiend Ultimate. Okay, so we had a buyback from Fada, a buyback from Smail. I believe that was it in terms of the buybacks. And four dead for Secret, three dead for EG. I mean, Fear got really low, Arteezy got really low. They were able to survive. That is some insane play. And Fear respawning at the perfect time. They lose Aegis for, for Secret. Yep. Um, Cheese is on Ace still. They will find mid one, though. Here we go. He's going to get shackled up. Double raise. This should be another kill, potentially. Wave of Terror Puppy's there, but he can't do anything. Oh, and now man. he might get chased down. They're going to have a couple more auto attacks here and should get the job done. Puppy one trying to hit. run. He's pretty speedy, but Misery has jumped in front. He's got the hex. The auto attack is there. And Arteezy, a double kill, and is now dominating. Oh, man. This game swung so quickly in favor of EG. Just that one fight, and now they so might have takes. to buy back on mid one, down for 55 seconds. Crit just respawning. Fada now up in three. No buyback for Puppy, dead for 38. I don't know, do you want to force this? You might want to just go for the tier two, it looks yep. like. Take the free money and back up, reset, come back later. If they could get a tier three, it would be perfect, and then move to the shrines, but I don't think that's going to happen here for EG. Still, though, they have a 1k lead now. Luna is still giant in terms of the net worth. Misery walking up, trying to get the wards down, can't oh, do boy. it. He gets blown away by Ace. <laughs> That was optimistic. That's like. Back up one. Yeah. Yep. The one that I, I know what he was going for, but yep. sometimes it looks so go good, for it. so juicy. One to drop the wards up on the high ground. <laughs> not quite, but uh, still, I mean, losing Missouri not the biggest thing in the world, especially after that last crazy fight going EG's way. Yeah, definitely. Not a big deal at all. You know, Luna is still at the top of the net worth charts, but it doesn't feel like it in these fights, right? right. It still feels like she gets disabled. You know, all these heroes swarm her, and she just can't fight at all. I guess Butterfly changes things. They're doing a good job of really kiting out that BKB iteration. Yep. I mean, like, Ace is trying to find something with Eclipse, with auto attacks, and half the time he's just running around mm -hmm. trying to find any target that he can. You know what it helps? When he runs in like that, it uh, gives vision so Legion Commander can find the right hero to jump. Right. Right, so it is important for him to do that, but at the same time, he is your big damage dealer who wants to get as much uptime with the right clicks as possible, so... It's a bit of a weird situation. Butterfly is now done for the Luna, though. That is going to keep him alive a little bit longer here. And Ace, again, you cannot underestimate a late game Luna, I feel like, in this situation, Brax, despite how That's well true. EG are playing right now. Yeah, very, very true. Especially with the uh, Butterfly. The power spikes are huge with these new items coming up. And yes. There's nothing to really deal with this evasion. In. For now. And Yapsor also picked up a uh, Aghanim Scepter, too, which, of course, he was eyeing since the beginning of the game, but now he does have yep. it. Now he's going to be disappointed with how underwhelming it is. <laughs> You know, you gotta have hopes and dreams. Roar coming in, they found Ace, can they bring him down? The Eclipse comes through, good swap for Puppy. He's in trouble, the Super Wars dropped as well. Fear pops the BKB, they've oh got Fada boy. on top of it, and Ace, his BKB running low, he's got to run, the Nether Blast is there. Everybody chasing, Mystic Flare, the call down drops up, a lot of damage being done. EG need to back up and be careful. A double kill for mid one, but Misery gets off the shackles beautifully. RTZ tried to fight so this, low. they're gonna get a double kill for him. They're trying to get the kill, it's the Requiem that gets Ace in the end. It's a four for four trade, and mid one almost gets Misery, who blinks out just in time. Wow. Oh my god. That's Midwin a had slaughter. a sick nether blast there. Yep. The mystic flares were coming out too from Yapsor. No, Misery, don't oh, walk up. Boy. Get out of there. Oh, oh no. Wanted, wanted the gem, the gem so badly. He wanted the gem. But still, it's a it's a team wipe. I guess there's some pretty big death timers, but 
That's just solo pug though, right? Where's it gonna go? Not like he can boot the travel to the top lane and blast that tier three one. He's also pretty low. He's just gonna push in bit, honestly. Yep. He, that top tier three is still alive somehow. It is. Which is pretty impressive. Don't know how, but it is. Uh, the uh, the Skyrath made ultimates did so much damage in that fight, actually. Yeah. They all ran through it and just... Whew. It was nuts. So, he is actually pushing in mid pretty quickly. Their death timers are pretty long. I'm sure he'll just run top. Yeah, he goes top now. The wave is coming in. This tier three is gone. There's going to be shrines for secret, it looks like. Yeah. Do they have a glyph? I think. It's not worth glyphing, right? No, he'll just it, come back and do it again. He's, he's trying to put... He's level 25. Did he get the nether blast talent? He got oh the nether blast talent. He has so the nether blast talent. Oh my lord. This rack might just be gone. They have to glyph okay, for this. Glyph. This is insane. This is level 25 Pugna, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually super Wait, the good. the damage is insane. Look yeah, it's that. plus 200. And although Crit is hunting, he can't void him again. It's on cooldown. Puppy's there. Puppy might be in trouble. Yep, just keep you on cooldown. Vada's coming in, though. They might be able to get a duel here. And now they're just going to leave Puppy to die. See ya. Ugh. So, I mean, but that is that is a lot of damage to be dealt to that range Rex at the very least. Yep. And again, the tier 3 tower gone now, too, for, for EG. I mean, Secret in a situation where they win one fight and they can kill EG's entire base, right? Luna and Pugna with the Vengeor as well. It's a ridiculous amount of building damage. Yeah, we've got a bunch of 25s coming down now. Yeah. Despite EG having the momentum for the longest time, it felt like in the last 10 minutes or so, it is now starting to feel like secret with just one fight win, like you just mentioned. It, it could all be over for EG in Captain's Draft 4.0. So we'll see. I mean, what other big items do we have coming out? I, I, I was looking at the, and I think it was an MKB that Fear was building. I'm not sure if he still is. It yeah, looks super like he's got close. The what else is there that's big? Sunel's BKB. Oh, they're going to find a kill. That's a pretty big kill. That's a very big kill. Fought it dead for 78 seconds. Gets dropped. And look at these lanes, too, just coming into secret space, that bottom and mid lane to play off of now. So you're fighting four versus five all of a sudden. And yeah, they're going to be able to push up high ground, I would imagine, for EG. That's a very long death timer as well. 60 seconds. Right. We'll see what they can get done. Mr. is finally going to make yeah, his dream come he's true. Gonna drop, drop those wards, wards, buddy. Get them down there. Come on. The dream will come true. Get up there. Drop the ward first. There it is. It takes a lot of damage, though. <laughs> that, that nether ward did some serious work. Arteezy's Lincoln Spear is broken. Fear going to back up for now. The Serpent Ward still doing work. Nether Blast pushing them back as well. That push looked better in his dreams. Tower's still standing. Uh, it's getting low, but not quite enough. 87 HP. And EG will have to back up now. No Serpent Wards for another 97 seconds. And uh, back to the drawing board they go. The big thing also to talk about Roche. In another 25 seconds, we'll find out the respawn time. Could be a quick one. Yep, I imagine both teams will be looking towards Roshan. It's pretty much that part of the game, right? Every time Roshan's up, you can't... Uh, gotta keep your eyes on it you, all You the time. cannot give this away, especially to EG with Serpent Wards. It's yep. just too much. Double Serpent Wards, and that's yep. probably some buildings going on. One side, you have double Serpent Wards, and the other, you have the uh, double Luna BKB Eclipse combo as yes. well. So, this is a very big good. timing window for both of these teams. Yeah, some great refresher chart carriers. What is Ace building into currently? It looks like a Satanic is his next item with the Butterfly already done. That'll keep him alive a lot longer, and these more drawn-out fights make things a lot easier for Ace. I feel like he might uh, have to go for a Lincoln Sphere. As oh, well to mid do one? The they need Vision, they need a Hex, they've got oh. the Yule Scepter. Mid one's been caught. Sumele Batipi's in as well. This Rock Barrage plus a couple of auto attacks will do the job, and they will find a kill with him down now for 100 seconds. That is Giant Roast Timer, though. What's it looking like here? Two-minute roast timer, unfortunately, for EG. Still, that's a big kill. 90 seconds, no Pugna. They're just going to march down a lane. Unless Secret can try to find some sort of pickoff, but EG look like they're all just... They're using the buddy system. Secret are thinking, okay, let's just play at our high ground at this point. We could go for a pickoff. No reason to at this point, though. Play safe, get back to the base. And that 2-3 tower might fall. Serpent Wards back up in 11 seconds, and that easily should finish off the tier 3 tower. Whether or not they can get more, Again, remember, you have that buyback to, to worry about for mid when he does have it available. That's true. They have to be very careful about how much or, or how far they commit, but EG have shown a lot of patience in both these games, especially regarding high ground. They're very, very cautious and perhaps sometimes a bit too reserved. Something else to worry about is actually the global, the global concussive shot that this guy red has now. It's nice for giving vision, actually. Yeah. From all these heroes. It's just mega annoying, too. It is. It just gets spammed off cooldown all yep. the time. And it's a very short cooldown as well. Yep. Global Concussive Shot, Yapster's had a pretty good game, even with all these BKB carriers for EG. He's had a couple of good Mystic Flares. So, uh, Skyrath is really weak when they have 10-second BKBs, but as the game goes on, and, you know, we have 5-second BKBs, it feels pretty strong. Yeah, it gets a lot better. 
Now the problem for him is surviving in these long drawn out fights. That is true. It's always a massive issue. He's pretty tanky, all things considered, but you know. So again, Roche is the big thing to talk about here. And it's up in 37. They didn't have to force up the mid one buyback. Good news for Secret. And uh, again, we're, we're probably looking at a massive fight to contest this Roshan one way or the other, unless it just gets destroyed quickly by it one of these teams. It would die extremely fast from both these teams. Yep. We've got a ton of physical damage from both of these guys. Beastmaster with the aura, making Shadowfiend hit extremely quick. Gyrocopter as well, and then negative armor from the Vengeful Spear on one side. EG can get down bottom and push this wave in, maybe force his back secret. Because, because I mean, top lane is pushed in considerably on EG's side. Well, this bottom lane is pushing slowly, right? We've got two wagons down here. Yeah. I would be able to Don't underestimate the wagons, but they're pretty good. They're very angry, especially at this stage of the game. They're going to be able to do some serious work on those tier threes and those raxes. But uh, a hawk scouting the fact that Roche is up, and it is of course the refresher shard. Not a, not only just that, but of course the agent cheese on top of it. In secret, and they're going to make the move. Yep, it's the warding mission. Perhaps they can get some vision down, take out that shrine, and then really force EG into an awkward spot trying to contest Roshan. I mean, the dream would be to get a pick, obviously, but... Yeah, of course. Not going to be easy with EG playing together at this point. Yep, they definitely know what's coming. Yep, and there's the darkness. I guess maybe they're going to smoke. We might see a big together. fight here, depending on how this moves. How this, uh... How these teams meet. And we're going to jump into the mid lane. The duel comes out. This could be big. They're going to find a kill, potentially getting low. That's going to be crit down, but Fiverr will fall forward. He's got five that ace, popping the BKB, looking to try to take this fight. Arteezy, Shadow Blades away. The Eclipse going on the other side. Sumail, BKB'd up. Misery coming in, gets the hex off of time. Puppy is there with the, oh, the save if necessary, but ace getting caught ace and killed. Yeah. Arteezy and Fear going to work, but Fear will in fact fall. They take down Yapshore. They fought back on Fada. Arteezy needs to back himself up, taking a lot of damage. Oh, the Arc no. chasing after him. I don't know if it's going to do enough damage. It'll get him low, but I don't think it'll bring him down. Oh, it's going to no. be close. He's still running at this point, and it looks like he's able to make it away, and he will avoid the damage. But here comes mid one, the nether blast, the life drain. They take him out. It's going to be four dead for EG. Vata does buy back. Misery, the only survivor. He's going and for the war drop. trying to drop the wards, but mid one <laughs> is there. The nether blast. I've seen this movie before, Misery. Oh, man. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. He's so close every time. Just can't quite get up to the hill. What well, this game's the mid one show. We're talking about how Skyrath Mage is pretty good when BKBs go down, but Pugna, Jesus. So EG lose all five. It was a three, four, five exchange, I believe, at the end of the day. And uh, if you're EG, I don't know, do you force out your buybacks? Luna's not there to take Roshan. Roshan has still not been taken yet. But we're hitting base here, Mott. Yeah. Pugna's gonna boot the travel in a few seconds. This is a big moment for Secret right now. Fada pushing in, there's the buyback from Sumail. So the thing is, Beastmaster can only cover one lane, but Pugna can just, he can blast a different lane if you wanted, or he can even just blink onto the Beastmaster. Super uh, and dagging him up. Nether blast damage from the Pugna is able to do some serious work on these buildings. And it's getting lower and lower, and they might lose another tier three here. They don't want to have to buy back on Fear or on Arteezy, but it might be time. They don't well, want to how do they jump racks. this guy? Blink dagger, and he has uh, Lincoln Sphere. There's no way to do it. Mid one's just going to stay and continue to blast. I mean, look how much damage he's doing, and I don't know if they can do anything here. They might just give up this Rex. And Gyro's up in five seconds, though. And they, they might be able to force him off. We'll see if yep. mid one backs off. Yes. They won't get the full set. They won't even get a single building other than the tier three tower, actually. But still, look at this. They've TP'd into the shrine, and then they're running straight at Roshan. Yeah. Shadow Fiend's on up for This is going to fall so quickly. EG need to get yep. there very quickly, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to do so. I don't so. think they can make it, honestly. With a e wave of terror. Even if they make it, then they're forced into Press a 3v5. This is a refresher shard secret looking to get the these three items trying to put the finishing touches on this game, trying to take a, at least a set of racks, and they're going to get it easily. EG not there in time. Age is picked up. Refresher Shard as well as Cheese. And they're looking for Fear as well as Sumail trying to back up. Remember, he bought back. He's oh, in the trouble. The life drain. The jump in the duel is there. And now Sumail dead for 112 seconds in secret just like that. Oh, no. They're now fighting five versus four. That's the dieback. That is huge. EG losing a critical hero at this point. And now this is going to be a tough defense for them at this point of the high ground. Again, it's like EG are forced to engage because look at this. They can just sit there and hit it and you either go on the Aegis carrier or... You on this Pugna, who is super far back, just blasting away. One full set of racks down instantly. Ace will move top. He's got the Manta. There's Nether Blast. The range rack's already super low. It's gone. It's going to be two sets easily in secret now.
They're at the jugular, looking for the finish off on EG, getting super They need super to do something, close. right? Or else it's just the same thing. Luna's going to take everything. They've got to try to fight here. They don't want to lose Megas. They might lose Misery. Good Nether Blast avoided by Yule Scepter. Ace is up there. There's the Eclipse. He's got his Satanic. He's going to be able to pop it. If he needs it, he also has the Aegis as well. And he's going to work. He also has the Refresher Shard in his backpack, ready to go for another BKB. And this is going to be Mega Creeps. They lose Misery instantly as the Nether Ward does the job. And with two heroes dead and oh, Megas down, man. now a third. This is looking pretty impossible for evil geniuses to defend their tier fours. It's going to take a miracle at this point. So you can still have everything as well. Aegis, Refresher Shard, Cheese. Almost losing Aegis. The good swap back. Ace is getting low. The tower hits. It's not going to be enough. And now RTZ is pushed back by the life drain as well. The tier four now falling. They're going to lose both tier fours at this point, And now it's just the Ancient. It feels so hopeless. What can they do? Captain Strap 4.0 might come to an end for them very quickly. RTZ drops oh, instantly. Man. Dueled up the Mystic Flare from Yap. So the only survivor is now going to be Fear. Wave of Terror up. He's going to buy back RTZ Will and try to get back into the fray. Three versus five. And Fear taking so much damage from this Pugna. It's going to be a double kill for Fata. And RTZ fountain dive at the end of the game. He will fall a triple kill. And Secret will win and move on. My, oh my, my, what a game. It felt like truly either team could have won at multiple stages of the game. But uh, it just got to that point where BKBs are at five seconds, Pugna blasts you for half your health, and then you have to press your BKB. Skyrath does the exact same thing. And the fights just linger on for so long.